Hey everybody, so I've made a decision on my project. I want to remove this existing antenna, transition to a hidden antenna on, uh, either in the passenger compartment or under the rear deck, and then go ahead and fill in the existing opening uh, that's in the fiberglass today. Simply preference on my part, I think it's going to provide a cleaner look for my car, and uh, I thought that this was a good opportunity to go ahead and make a how-to video to show how this process is completed. So, that said, let's just jump into it. We're going to start by removing the existing antenna. Okay, so now I have the antenna removed. <clears throat> and as you can see, we have a hole remaining. This is the opening that we want to fill in with our fiberglass. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and clean the surface thoroughly with some pre-paint prep. What this is going to do is remove any contaminants so that when we sand and grind and prep for our new fiberglass, we're not going to grind those contaminants down into the underlying fiberglass, which could compromise the bond. So let's get started on that. We'll clean it up and we'll get to work. All right, so I'm going to take my cleaner here, put it on a paper towel, and wipe down the area, turning the rag over a few times um, to pick up as much of the contaminant uh, and any material that may be there as possible. Notice I'm going beyond the edge of the repair, uh, making sure that all of the area around the opening is clean. We are going to blend the new fiberglass into the, into the uh, underlying fiberglass. So we want to make sure that we have uh, everything clean in the surrounding area. So we're all set with that. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of compressed air, clean compressed air, just to dry the area off. This allows me to get sanding more quickly. Now that the fiberglass is dry, I'm going to go ahead and start grinding this area with a die grinder with a 36 grit disc on it. This is a pretty aggressive disc. It's going to allow us to get down pretty quickly. Um, the goal here is to dish down the area around the opening and to create a seamless repair. So from the top side, we're going to go halfway through the thickness of the panel. We're going to grind down feather it back a couple of inches into the surrounding area. We're going to apply our fiberglass mat with our resin. Add a couple of layers as, as uh, necessary to build up back to the existing surface. And then once that's done, we're going to repeat the same process on the underside. So what we end up with is a panel that is 100% fiberglass all the way through. There's um, no gaps or, or you know, voids left in the area and it's a full structural repair. That's our goal. So before I get grinding, I'm going to put on my respirator. Don't want to be inhaling uh, this fiberglass dust, and uh, and we'll get to work. All right. So just about ready to go. I'm going to put the air on my uh, die grinder, and we're going to start away. Okay, so here's my ground down area. I actually went a little bit more than halfway through. I actually went about three quarters of the way through the panel. This is going to allow me to come back from the underside, sand back part way through the new material I'm going to place from the top side, and provide a really seamless, um, continuous structural repair in this area. Really don't want cracking to develop. So uh, this 36 grit disc left a really nice coarse surface that the uh, resin will really be able to bite into. I'm uh, not sure how well it shows up here, but before we move on, I'm going ahead and wiping this down uh, with, again, some more pre-paint prep cleaner. Uh, you know, wipe it down really well. It's interesting when you do this, you can actually see the fiberglass panel and, and the fibers within it. Now this is interesting because you can see at the perimeter, because I feathered this out, you can see the dark gray area that has no fibers in it. And this is the top layer of the panel um, that you can sand and do body work on and, and whatnot without getting into too much trouble. If you start grinding too deeply, you get into these fibers. And uh, if you're doing paint and you're trying to put paint over these fibers, they're porous, they wick the paint into the panel, uh, it can really mess with your finish. So uh, if you do do body work on a Corvette with fiberglass panels, 
just be sure that you don't sand too deeply or you get into that area and you'll end up having to seal the fibers before you paint. So uh, that's besides the point. So before we move on, the next step here is going to be to put a cardboard backing panel on the underside so that I have something to work against. We're going to apply our fiberglass resin and our mat and we'll be good to go. So one of the things I almost forgot to do, I guess I'm distracted by making the video here, is to actually roughen the surface around where I've dished out. I've gone through and I've dished out the area and, and prepared that to be uh, to receive fiberglass, but inevitably some of the fiberglass mat is going to extend beyond this repair area. So I want to make sure that if that does happen, when that does happen, that the fiberglass can reasonably bond to that surface as well. So I've got some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just making sure the surrounding area is rough enough to receive the repair materials as well. Alright, so we've prepared our, our area to receive the fiberglass, we've ground it down, dished it out, we've sanded the surrounding area, we've cleaned it with some pre-paint prep cleaner, some pre-paint cleaner rather, um, and now one thing I'm going to do before we start applying fiberglass is to actually put down some painter's tape. And in this painter's tape it helps with two things. Number two, it helps you uh, keep fiberglass resin and fiberglass away from where you don't want it. And, and secondly, it's going to help during the sanding process. We're actually going to overbuild our repair surface a little bit higher than the original fiberglass. And when we go to sand that down, when we get close to the original fiberglass level, we're going to start peeling this tape up. And it's going to help us know that we are getting close and that we need to perhaps start sanding a little bit more carefully. So you can see that the area I'm taping off is quite a bit larger than the actual hole. And we've got a three quarter inch hole and we're working with a five or six inch repair area and um, making sure that we have plenty of room to blend that repair back into the surrounding area. Uh, one of the benefits of this tape too is that this high edge here, the lip along the panel, it protects that so that as you're sanding this down you're not accidentally rounding down your fiberglass panel. <clears throat> so now that we've got this area taped off, I've got a sheet of fiberglass mat here. Uh, this is actually pulled from a much larger sheet that I have. Um, I like to use Evercoat products, both the Ever, Evercoat mat and the resin, they're high quality products. Um, and I'm going to actually start pulling little pieces off of this and I want naturally frayed edges. I don't want square edges, I don't want cut edges. Um, I want the fibers to be able to overlap and mix and work together to form a structural repair. So I'm going to pull off about six pieces of this, about six layers is, is how many I anticipate that I'll need here. And I'm just going to get these ready and set them aside um, for once I have my mat wrapped, uh, my mat and resin ready to go. So um, that's what I'm going to do here. And I actually may start with just a real small piece to go down to the bottom. You know, this is very subjective as to you know what's the right size piece, but um, generally you want to you know increase in size as you go through this. So I typically uh, prepare my pieces. I lay them out in the rough order that I want to use them in and uh, I have everything ready to go because the resin only stays workable for probably 10 or 15 minutes and after that well you've got to start with a new batch so uh, now that I've got these orientated I'm sort of laying them out in a sequence here off to the side beyond the view of the camera I suspect and I'm going to know which order that I want to take these in and I'm just going to start working uh, my repair once I have my resin mixed up now, <clears throat> for the resin itself, as I said, I, I like to use the Evercoat products. I just use a cheap yogurt container, even an old tin can uh, from some canned vegetables or some soup. It's been cleaned very well. I like to mix my resin in this. Once it's, uh, it, I'm done using it, I just throw it away. It's really easy. Same thing with the brush. I just use uh, some inexpensive China bristle brushes. You can get them at Walmart or any other uh, supply store. They're less than a dollar a piece. I think these one inch ones are 50 cents. So. Um, the end, it really makes it easy. Instead of dealing with cleaning up the fiberglass resin, you just toss it in the trash. It's quite easy. So, that said, I'm going to go mix up some resin and we're going to get to work on this repair. <clears throat> Alright, so I have my resin. I put the hardener in it. Mix this very well, better than you think you need to. Um, and then, um, once it's mixed, 
I'm going to go ahead and start um, priming the area uh, to receive the fiberglass. Um, by priming it, I mean I actually put down just a, a layer of, of um, resin on the repair area itself and around um, on the fiberglass around the repair area. This just makes sure that I get a really good bond on that first surface and um, I make sure that I don't end up with any delaminations down the road. So now I'm going to take my first piece. I'm just going to put it down in there. And actually I should have gloves on for this because if you don't, you end up with fiberglass on your hands and uh, it makes quite a mess. Uh, the fiberglass will stick to everything as you do this. So just putting on my gloves here to uh, help make things a lot easier in the end. So uh, I'm going to start wetting this down. Now you don't want to use too much resin, uh, but you want to use enough to wet it down. And I just use the end of the brush and I really work it in there. And you know you have enough resin when it goes from white to a translucent type color. You'll have a little bit of white spots in there still, but um, that, that's just the nature of the beast. So once I get the first piece down, I then put the next one, and you repeat. The trick here is to remember that the fiberglass, the mat itself, is what gives your panel its strength. So you don't necessarily want to use a ton of resin. You actually want to use as little resin as, as you can, and this is sort of the logic behind um, you know, some of these press molded panels is you want to get as much of the resin actually out as you can um, because it's the fibers that uh, give you your strength. So I'm going to continue to add a little bit. I'm going to wet my brush as I need it. As I, as I feel that the mat is sticking a little bit too much to my brush, I might add a little bit more. Uh, I'm working quickly here because I don't want my resin to to uh, kick on me. Um, like I said, you've got about 15 minutes or so to work and then it becomes the consistency of, uh, of, of jelly and uh, it really isn't workable at that point. So just about there. Now some of these are a little bit bigger than my tape. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, if some of the fibers project beyond my repair area, we can clean that up later. I get a stray fiber there. Um, you know, we're not going to worry about that too much. So, uh, last piece. I'm getting a little bit of uh, spillage under my fiberglass. I'll wipe that up here in just a minute. You know, it happens. It's not perfect. Alright. So now I'm going to really start push a little bit harder to really work that in there to make sure that I get all my fibers clean and uh, or excuse me push down into uh, the underlying area and I'm just kind of looking at it it looks as though it's high enough I have maybe a little bit of a low spot right here I want to make sure that I'm not too low I'd rather be too high than too low so uh, I'm gonna just add one more piece of one or two more pieces of fiberglass mat here in the middle to make sure that I've built my repair up high enough. Um, certainly easy to sand later. So <clears throat> I'll just make sure that I've got enough. So I think maybe this is a total of seven or eight different layers. So uh, it is quite a few layers. Um, you like to have all the orientation of the fibers in different directions to make sure that uh, you get a good repair area. And there you go. So I'm just going to take a quick paper towel now and wipe down this uh, stray material that's dripped onto my fiberglass. And there you have it. Okay, so we've allowed the fiberglass to cure for about three or four hours. Um, it's really what it takes for it to harden up enough to sand. Um, so all I've, I've got here is a DuraBlock. Uh, sanding block, rather small sanding block, it fits the area fairly well. Um, with 180 grit sandpaper, you could use rougher sandpaper if you wanted to, but uh, it's just what I had on hand uh, for leftover peel and stick material, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and use. Um, you could come in here and use a grinder or an electric sander or something like that, but I find that when you do it with an electrical device or mechanical device, that it really increases the likelihood that you're going to over sand. So uh, I subscribe to the philosophy of a little bit of elbow grease is going to keep you from 
um, doing more harm than good and then having to come back in and do additional repair. So I'm going to take this sanding block and I'm just going to start sanding with the direction of the grain. You see as I start to work these edges, the fibers start getting cut and eventually they do come loose. See here, I'm starting to catch the lip of the sandpaper. That's telling me I'm getting pretty close. So I'm going to pull back a little bit from that edge. I'll blend it in with some finer sandpaper. Uh, I've pretty much got these stray fibers here. It's a little bit uh, thick here in the middle, so I'm just going to keep going. All right, so I'm getting close now. See that starting to hit the sandpaper tells me I need to put a little bit more pressure down in this area and then up here as well to blend in just about there on this edge so a little bit more sanding to go and I think we'll be pretty close. All right, so we're getting close now. We're pretty much there. The tape is all pretty much feathered away, so I'm going to pull the tape up. Of course the resin has caused the glue to come off a little bit. Alright, so it looks pretty good. I'm a little bit high here still, and perhaps a little high here. So I'm going to attack that with my 80 grit a little bit more, and then once that's done, I'm going to get a larger sanding block and start blocking it smooth with some 180 grit paper. Alright, this is pretty close. So I'm going to blow the uh, dust off. And you can see that I have started blending that into the surrounding fiberglass. And that's exactly what you want to see. So now I'm going to come in with my larger block and Work to start smoothing the area out. Blend that in. Now I'm using 180 grit paper now to provide a uniform, seamless surface. When I come up to the edges, I'm being very careful not to roll over the edges, and actually, I may add some tape just to protect this edge. So I really don't want to round my edge over. And I'll probably put a little tape along here too, just to protect that from any accidental, accidental scuffs that I don't want to have to repair later. So now coming back in with my block, make a couple diagonal turns this direction, and then I'll come back in the other direction making an X. Now normally I would hold this block right flat to the surface, but it's really not enough flat surface here, so I'm actually using the edge, putting gentle pressure, really working to blend that in. Get a little on the edge there. What I'm looking for is something like this, where this edge, I run my finger over it, I can barely feel it, there's no defined edge anymore, whereas here you can see there's actually a sharp edge. I want this nice sort of blended edge that really is not defined, so keep going on this back edge to achieve that same surface. And you now sometimes you get there pretty quick and sometimes it takes a little longer. But once you start getting close, you'll develop that edge pretty quick. Now I'm keeping pretty even pressure on the front and the back of the block. Just to make sure that I, I 
I don't dish out one area. I want the whole repair to be flat. So, this is pretty good. When I run my hand over it, really can't feel much. I feel just a little bit of undulation, which is to be expected. And now if I take the camera and I zoom in, you can see a little bit better that there are actually some pinholes in the fiberglass itself. And this is just, you know, no matter how hard you try, you're not going to get all of the air bubbles out as you're doing the fiberglass. So there are some in there. So we're going to apply a little bit of glazing compound, get this all smoothed out, and we'll be done. All right, so get just a small amount of body filler. I'm using Evercoat Rage Gold. Uh, it's a really good body filler. Smooths easily, sands easily, uh, no pinholes. I've actually used a little bit of Plastic Honey, uh, which is another Evercoat product, which basically makes the uh, body filler act a little bit more like a glazing compound than a body filler. So, uh, given that the contours here are pretty close, I've uh, just elected to go ahead and use the glazing compound. So, I'm going through here now and I'm really pushing the material down in and I'm making sure that it gets into those underlying surfaces really well. And now I'm going to start feathering it out. I'm trying to use gentle even pressure. And the goal of this is to fill in the potholes, uh, pinholes rather, and really um, provide the opportunity to smooth out that surface one last time before going to uh, the sanding primer that we're going to be using. Alright, so our body filler has hardened now. So I'm going to come back in with our Dura block with 180 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to start working in an X pattern to sand this out and basically provide a nice uniform surface. So this is where you can see the tape comes in handy. I'm actually just riding up that curve and the tape is keeping me from rounding over that edge. And you can see here with the block, the high parts are, are obviously all the way sanded through the body filler and the surrounding areas uh, where it was a little bit lower have the body fill is still in there. So you can see I'm getting a nice feathered surface. I run my hand over it and I certainly can't feel anything. And uh, actually what works good, take a piece of paper towel and put that under your fingers. It prevents the tactile sensation on your fingers and it helps you, you just sense the changes in elevation or changes in height in the body panel. And that's a, a really good way to, to help feel the panel as you work through the sanding process. Alright, so here you have it. Here's the repair. You can see that the edges of the body filler are blended in really well. Uh, we've got pinholes. You can see the little green specks. Those are pinholes in the original fiberglass. That's why you want to use a glazing compound or body filler before you put the sanding sealer on there. Um, just to make sure that you don't have any of those um, you know, air pockets when you do your final paint. Um, and even when I run my hand over this with a piece of paper towel underneath, I can feel no variation at all. There you have it, folks. The one part that I haven't shown in this video is the work that I did from the underside. It's more or less the same as what I did from up top here. I came in with a die grinder with a 36 grit disc. I ground out uh, the a little bit of the new fiberglass and then flared that into the uh, original panel to make sure that it has seamless, nice, even transition from the new repair into the original. Uh, I, I roughed up all of the areas to receive fiberglass so that it had a good surface profile that the resin could bite to, then applied alternating layers of resin and fiberglass, again probably five or six layers, and then once that cured and hardened I came back in with the uh, die grinder and got it roughly smooth uh, using an 80 grit disc. Once I had it roughly smooth, I came in and primed it with some black primer to match the rest of the underside of the car. 
wasn't really interested in using the body filler. Doesn't need to be perfect in my case. Nobody's really going to see it. So uh, that's how it's done. I've got a nice smooth repair here. My next step is to come back in and um, put the sanding primer on the car once I've prepared the rest of the body for paint, and then do my final uh, final prep for for base coat and clear coat. So. That's how it's done. The process is pretty similar whether you're repairing um, a, a puncture in a fiberglass panel or whether you're filling in a hole straight from the factory that was made at the factory. Um, the process is similar. So I'm off to do a little bit of body work. Good luck with your projects.